After years of anticipation, Starfield has finally released, but players are realizing there's a lot that the game doesn't tell you. To help you get the most out of the game and get off to a strong start, I've put together a list of 15 tips that I wish I knew before playing Starfield. In this guide, I will avoid spoilers and focus only on the early hours of the game. Starting with character creation and progression tips, you'll be happy to know that you can change your appearance after character creation by visiting an enhanced shop. So don't stress too much about your looks if you're having a hard time deciding if you want a beard or not. The obvious answer to that question though is yes. The second tip is about choosing your character background. Your background is essentially three free starting skill points with some light roleplay flavoring for your character. The option you choose will occasionally give you some unique dialogue options and conversations, but not to the same extent as Baldur's Gate 3. If you don't care about the RP factor, choose your background based on what skills you want at the start. Stay tuned for a later tip that'll help you decide what skills you want early on. For my next tip, let's talk about traits. Traits are an optional feature during character creation that provide you with both an advantage and a disadvantage. Despite the disadvantages, I would suggest you take three of them anyways. If you end up disliking a trait, there's an NPC that can remove it. Different traits require different NPCs to get removed. Oxygen management is huge, especially early game and when you're encumbered by carrying too much loot. So traits that boost oxygen are very useful. For example, extrovert boosts your oxygen when you have a companion with you. And alien DNA gives you an oxygen boost, but nerfs healing. Some traits are less obvious about what they do, such as kid stuff, a trait that I'm glad I chose because the interactions with my in-game parents have been very funny. They have also given me some loot, including a spaceship. Tip number four is that skills in Starfield are varied, and some are much more useful than others early on. You can unlock every skill in the game, so you don't risk missing out if you make a mistake, but having the right skills early can help smooth out the experience. Three skills that I consider must-haves are weightlifting, boost pack training, and payloads. You'll want to get these skills early and rank up weightlifting. Other high priority skills for most characters are persuasion, whatever weapon you want to specialize in, security, target and control system, piloting, and rank one of stealth so you can actually see if you're hidden or not. Moving on to pacing and time management tips, you should know that the game starts off slow, but gets more interesting while you progress and learn about the universe. Early on, I recommend primarily focusing on the main mission and don't get too distracted by side content. The main missions unlock multiple companions and a major feature. Completing the Into the Unknown quest early on is helpful, but to avoid spoilers, I won't say anything more than that. If you start off like I did and try to do everything, it's very easy to ruin the pacing and decrease your enjoyment of the game. Your first trip to New Atlantis in particular suffers from what I like to call Mass Effect 1 Citadel Syndrome. While there are many parallels between New Atlantis and the Citadel, the reason I mention it is because the pacing screeches to a halt if you try to do everything at the Citadel on your first trip there. The same is true for New Atlantis, but even more so because there is so much to do. The next tip, however, is sort of an exception to the last one. Faction quests are very rewarding both loot and story-wise. For example, starting the UC Vanguard questline gives you an opportunity to learn about the history of the universe and major factions, then turns into a very interesting storyline. The history bit is a tour through a museum that can be quite dry, but it serves as a crash course to the universe at large that I found made everything else more interesting with the added context. You can start the mission at the Mast Building in New Atlantis by speaking with Commander Tuala by the main entrance. Tip number seven is that saving time by fast traveling will increase your enjoyment of the game. It does come at the cost of some immersion, but in my opinion, it's very much worth the trade-off. This game isn't No Man's Sky or Star Citizen. With that in mind, you should know that you don't have to run back to your ship when you're on a planet. 
You can easily fast travel to your ship or other planets via the menus to save time and reduce loading screens, of which there are many in this game. An important tip is don't try to engage with all of the mechanics in the game. There are a ton of them, and trying to engage with all of them takes a lot of time. Just find which ones you enjoy and focus on those, otherwise you might burn yourself out. As an example, I didn't find 100% planet scanning to be particularly fun or engaging, so I stopped doing it early and started enjoying the game more. Trying to do everything, especially early on, is also a huge drain on your skill points and credits. It's easier to engage with more mechanics the further you are into the game. The next tip will help you deal with the fact that Starfield surface maps are terrible and useless within cities. This can make it challenging to get around when doing missions, especially when you're in more confusing areas like the well in New Atlantis. If you bring up the scanner, it will point to your active mission and put directional markers on the floor to help guide you there. The directional marker is a bit hit and miss and doesn't always show up, but it's very useful and helps reduce navigation frustration. The next couple quick tips are related to crew and companions. First off, pay attention to their skills. Their skills have the same effect as yours, but they are only useful if that person is properly assigned or equipped. For example, if you have a laser specialist, but equip them with a ballistic rifle, their skill is being completely wasted. Tip number 11 is that you can give items to companions, so they can help you lug around all the loot you gather. Just start a conversation with them, pick the trade option, then switch to your inventory to give them items. You can even equip better gear on your companions, which is especially important for weapons. Just be sure to hit the equip button while in their inventory, otherwise they won't use the gear you give them. Speaking of inventory management, tip number 12 is that it's hugely important in this game, and is frankly a pain in the ass. It's especially annoying early on with very limited inventory space and small cargo holds. As previously mentioned, companions can carry items, and the weightlifting and payload skills are essential. Beyond that, it's worth knowing that there's an infinite storage chest in your room at the lodge in New Atlantis, and you can build storage containers at outposts. For the next tip, you don't want to loot everything. Most of the loot is junk and not worth the time and inventory space. As a general rule of thumb, only pick up things that are either worth 1000 credits per 1 kilogram of weight, or are items you'll actually use. Tip 14 is that when you loot enemy ships, don't forget the cargo hold and the captain's locker. Those tend to have the best loot on the ship, but are very easy to miss. For my final tip, it's important to not forget about any contraband you pick up. Contraband has a yellow mark on it, and will get you put in jail if you travel to some areas with it. Shielded cargo can help hide it, but it's not a 100% chance. I found the easiest place to sell is the Trade Authority located in the Den Station that is within the Wolf System. It's usually not worth it though, as it's not uncommon for you to only get one-fifth to one-tenth of the item's actual value. Starfield is a deep game with a lot to learn but it doesn't do a great job of teaching you things. While there are many more tips I could give you, I limited this list to the things that I thought would be most helpful to get you started in the early game. This list should set you up for success and enable you to discover and learn more about the game yourself while playing it. Do you have any tips that aren't on this list? If so, let everybody know in the comments down below. I'll definitely read and appreciate any insights you have to share. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. For more single player PC gaming content, consider subscribing. If you're looking for other new single player PC games to play, check out this video about the other new releases in September. This is Poto Sniper, logging out.